sing it. That's my boy. <laughs> you hear? The church of what's happening now. What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? Everything all right today? Who, me? Yeah, you, you fuck. Well, I'm like, I'm like five minutes away from not understanding anything that happened. Oh, please. <laughs> He gave me, we, 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 he, I picked him up and we went and got a pot cookie, so this is going to be an interesting podcast. Two pot cookies, and you ate a quarter, and I lied to you. They weren't I know, 100 I, you milligrams. You always lie to me. It's never. <laughs> so get ready to see the fucking devil. This is the same cookie that got us lost to San Diego this week. We're going, <laughs> we're going deep tonight. Everything else don't fucking matter. I got two great guests in the studio. I got my brother, Martin Moreno, and my other little brother, fucking uh, Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias. What's happening, gentlemen? <laughs> What's up, Uncle Joey? What What's up, that? Joey? I can't call it. Great to have you motherfuckers here. It's thank a, you, and thank you for honor. sharing your uh, your treat no, with us. No, please. It's an honor. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You got you know, you to get the blood going. You know what I'm saying? Because if not, I want everybody to be on the same wavelength here, so nobody's missing nothing. nothing. What's going on with you there, Iron Maiden? I'm <laughs> there. You bad motherfucker. He's walking at me on the street. I'm like, look at this guy. He looks like a you. young Danny Trejo. Yeah, right? <laughs> look at him with his long so me- hair. It's a Mexican D. Snyder. That's fucking the axe. He's not even Machete. He's the axe. He's still... I'm feeling good, Joey, man. You look Thank- beautiful. Thank you, bro. I seen your son last week. That's a big motherfucker, though. That's Six foot four. Jeez, he's bigger than that Blake fucking Griffith. <laughs> he's that- a me- yeah, yeah, he's a, a Mexican six foot four uh, pretty motherfucker. He is a pretty motherfucker. God bless him and God yeah. bless you. Thank you did you, a bro. good job. Thank he's you, always man. very nice and very sweet. And what's up with you, you fucking savage of love? Because <laughs> that's exactly what you are. You're just a fucking savage. That's it. Like, that's it. It's over. You got, you know, you are. I got to ask you a question off the bat before we even go anywhere. Uh, when we were on that bus, on that plane ride with uh, mommy mommy in the middle and we both fell asleep on her coming back from Tucson when you when you were sleeping that day were you, did you ever have a thought that you would have a concert movie coming out July 11, 2014 oh, man, I, <laughs> my only goal at that moment was to pay my rent man I just wanted to I, I had not, not even full rent it was half rent it was $150 the club's name was Bugsy if people came in with a bug they got in for free it was booked by Rudy Moreno yeah, nice. yeah, yeah sorry. so you know, I took, you know I took home 30 right you took home 30 <laughs> And a check. <laughs> I mean, did you ever think of what's going, what's what's happening right now in your world? Did you ever imagine this growing up? Did you ever imagine this on that plane ride when you were coming back from Bugsy's that day? I mean, you know, the fact that I was just doing stand up was was the dream. It wasn't even a like you know thinking, oh, will it ever get to the point where it's a concert? You know, I mean, I, I was just happy to be on the road. I was happy to be performing with 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 co- other comedians, and that that was it for me. I didn't think it got better than that. I mean. Uh, when a couple of weeks ago, I think I, I saw the trailer to the concert, and I just, you know, I watched it, and I, I watched it. It's, it's like when you, you're there. I was right there. I saw that. That, that was just, uh, that was the Bicycle Club 15 years ago. On wow. The I you still know? owe Javier Sanchez 200 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, people, when you first start doing stand-up, you see somebody on HBO. Mm-hmm. You see somebody on HBO. And that's how you get turned on. At least I did. At least we did. You know, all the older generation. You saw somebody on HBO, and you thought that he just walked off the street, walked into the club, and he's that got like, on he's stage, like that. and did an hour. And that's what you thought. And you're like, I could do that, or I can't do that, or whatever the fuck. People don't know the what goes on, what happens, how it starts, how one morning you wake up and you go, I'm funny in that motherfucker. Then you tell your friends, and you tell a couple friends, and they say, fuck you, and they bet you 20 <laughs> bucks that you're not going to go to the Laugh Factory on Latino night and get on stage. And you get on stage, and next thing you know, you're in the back of the car, you know, with other guys farting, and you sit in the back seat, you're running for sodas. Next thing you know, you're in the front seat. Next thing you know, you're driving the fucking car, and now you're a headliner. People don't know the, the journey, and I want people to know your fucking journey. It's yeah, it, it's, it's been uh, 17 years in the making. I started doing stand-up comedy uh, April 10th, 1997. So and, and, I, and, and that moved, July, I think I, I want to say that is uh, probably the first time I met you. Yes, because I moved here January 29th in 97. And uh, I, I just remember going to Bugsy's with you or whatever. And then remember Big Alex? Fuck, with the three necks? Yeah. With, with <laughs> the, the you three, never saw nobody that necks. big. That, that was dude f- was massive. It was amazing. It was amazing. Head. Remember he used to take us to eat? He'd pick us he, up in yeah, the truck take and us take to us eat. to eat. And, 
Then he dropped you off at this hotel. That the Cliff Manor Inn. Oh, and they redid on Oracle. It on Oracle, and it's redone wow. now. It's not a crack hotel no more. Oh no, <laughs> no, it's like a New York hotel, stand up showers. And you know what? When you when you don't know anything else, that was like the greatest hotel ever for me. I didn't like, give are you a fuck. Me? It was the best. You know the it, the towels were clean. They had a radio and a TV, and you know I just thought that all hotels had to have the TVs bolted. <laughs> I, I didn't know any better. I'm like, oh well, at least I have a TV. You know. That is crazy. I didn't, think, I didn't think that it got better than that. They had the little Mexican place across the street. The the re- yeah the restaurant. Now, I think I went down there with you, mommy, 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 and one time with Darren Carter. <laughs> he wouldn't fucking shut the fuck up. Because <laughs> I love Darren Carter. He's my brother. But Jesus Christ, too cold on the plane. Do you feel a draft? <laughs> Darren, I don't give a fuck. We're on a plane. Who gives a fuck? What would you rather do, be in a car? I feel a little draft. My it's, neck. I have, I have a long set tonight. <laughs> But it's just imagine. And then I was thinking about the bicycle club. Like we go down there on a Thursday night. It was in a bar. It was the little the little corner. Uh, the little corner. The little bar. corner inside the bar where I guess they play music. Uh, I had made it my uh, my room. I told the guy that was running it, Javier Sanchez. He says, "Hey, you know, if you could bring in at least ten people, you know, I'll, I'll give you, you know, I'll give you some tickets. You can, you know, pass them out, and I'll give you, you know, a hundred dollars, and you pay whatever comics." And for the most time, we were just losing money. But you know, he was happy. It was a show we would do every Thursday night, and that was the first gig I ever started promoting on a regular basis. Thirty-five dollars it paid. Probably. Yeah, like a check for thirty-five. You had to go back the next yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't know. Like, you know, I gotta, get, I gotta get a, a gram at eight o'clock, so I would drive on the seven ten at like four thirty, not knowing, into fucking traffic. It was just, uh, it was just amazing. I, I still remember doing spots at you know Laugh Factory, you like building the Laugh Factory for like twenty bucks or twenty five bucks or something. Like not that. even. Well, no, no, no. 12, Jamie 50. would pay you those random yeah. weird twelve dollar yeah, checks, twelve dollars yeah. and shit. And you know, you sit here and you look at this. Like I've been, here, I've been in LA for seventeen years, dog. No lie. When I came to LA. I thought this was just going to be a fluke. I thought mm-hmm. I was just trying to kill time. I was just killing time to face reality. But then it became like Richard Gere, an officer and a gentleman. I had nowhere else to go. That's it. And when you have nowhere else to go, what do you do? You keep getting on stage, and eventually you're going to get fucking funny. Something's going to happen. You know, it's funny. I go to jujitsu now. You looked at me weird when I said that to you about a year ago. Because <laughs> I got sleep apnea. I got sleep apnea. And I hate, I hate being scared of something. I hate fucking being scared of Like, I'm scared of needles. Whenever I go get blood out, I bring Santana, Oye come over, and I, and I put the iPod on, I look the other way, and I move my foot to the rhythm. I don't like blood, I don't like needles. That's why I go to acupuncture, because I want to always overcome my fears. Okay, I was going to say, I, it's like... I, <laughs> yeah, I fucking yeah. hate it. So I'll go to acupuncture, I won't look at the needles, I'll look down. For the first two or three years, I fainted. Now I don't faint no more. I don't faint no more from the That's needles. That's some masochistic shit. You have to, because you know, what happens yeah. when the Russians come? They're going to stick needles in me. you got to be fucking prepared. You know what I'm saying? you got to be prepared. If, if they, you know, they, they traded for five foot. Now they're going to trade, what's his name? They're going to trade fucking Derek Jeter for six Taliban. Did you hear about that one? The, the Taliban's going to come. They're going to fuck us up the ass. you got to be prepared. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to sit there. can't take fucking needles. What happens if terrorists take over and we're out of shape? we got to fucking run. That's why I'm getting in shape. i got to pick my daughter up and run. So I'm scared. I, whenever I get out my back, I can't breathe. So I was talking to a friend of mine. He goes, why don't you go to the gym? Oh, God damn, I got to smell men's feet, <laughs> men's asses and shit. And, and I tell you, I went and I fell in love with it, man. How long have you been doing jiu-jitsu? 13 months. This is my 13th month. Wow. And I fucking, I, I just started not getting scared because I couldn't breathe. So every time I go and do a couple of hip escapes, bro, I had to get up, take my gear off, take the belt off. <sighs> You're fucking breathing. You see scars, you know, scars. You see stars, you know? <laughs> so I just wanted to overcome my fears. That's why I fucking started going to jiu-jitsu, just so I could breathe on my back, you know? That's the reason why. Wow. What, what are we talking about? I don't know. This cookie already yeah. hit me. <laughs> this cookie kicked in. I'm just mesmerized by your voice. You have a very hypnotizing voice. Yes, yeah. I do. I don't you fuck around, though. I don't <laughs> fuck around. You should read nursery little stories. Oh, that's so hysterical. It's hysterical because I, I, I look at the... Every morning when my daughter gets up, if I'm home, she runs to the room, the office, and I pick her up and I got to do whatever I'm doing. I got to stop and put on ABC, you know, A is for Apple. And when I'm saying A is for assholes, I'm saying all that shit in my head. But you don't I say don't, it out loud. No, I don't call her because she's, like, she's 17 months. She's picking that shit up. everything. Like, one morning, she's going to look at me and go, what the fuck? And I'm gonna, my <laughs> wife is going to... My wife is going to die. I told my wife the other day, we got to stop cursing in front of her. She's like, me, you, not me. I don't curse that much in front of her, but it's hysterical. When I read her things, mm-hmm. I always, like, when she's, the other day we were at the park, and some kid hit a, a thing, 
and the, the thing hit her in the chest, and she looked at the kid really mean, and she started crying. The kid was older. And I looked at that little motherfucker in the back of my head. I'm like, you little fucking black cocksucker. And I was, I already seen myself throwing the ball at him and hitting him in the head and the ball bouncing off his head. I had one of those rubber balls in my hand. I had to control myself. Like, I'm like, I'll fucking kill you, little fuck. You hit my daughter again. Because at first, it's hard. You don't know, you know. You don't know. A couple weeks ago, I was at this other park and some little fucking kid was spinning. And, and I'll say shit as I'm with them. Like, I won't say it out loud. You know, like the kid cut my daughter off and he slipped and fell. And I heard him, oh, I'm like, that's what you get, you little cocksucker, for cutting my daughter off. I didn't say it out loud, but I still <laughs> you said internal, it. You internalized it. Yeah, you internalized it. That's what you get, you little fuck. Next time I'm going to kick you in the fucking neck. You cut my daughter off, but you can't kick a kid in the neck. But trust me, I, I got to get used to this shit. This is going to be an uphill battle for Oh, me. raising a little daughter is going to be a mother. Anything. You yeah, know, yeah. I went to a friend's house that has a child that's a hitter. Mm. And there was a couple times I, hit I almost reached across. And oh, oh, I had okay. to catch myself. Like, I had to catch myself because he hit his sister. The sister was on the floor, and he came up and smacked her in the head. She's a baby. This motherfucker just came up and hit her. My original reaction was just to smack. I had to catch myself. And after, like, ten minutes, I go, honey, we got to leave. And I got in the car, and I was like, what's the matter? I, go, I was stressed out sitting there because I wanted to kick that fucking kid because yeah. the father wouldn't beat the fuck out of him. That kid needed a fucking beat. But anyway, that's none of my business, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not the fucking man, it's okay, Joe. Yeah, oh, I get freaking pissed off. You got it, you know. It's a, it's hysterical, but uh, I don't even know what the fuck we're talking about. We're talking about mine. Your baby. Your oh, baby. baby. That's yeah, it. Yeah, just yeah. warm thoughts. Yeah, beautiful. Warm thoughts. Me smacking a fucking kid at the park. <laughs> little cocksuckers. But I can't wait till she gets to that age because, you know, she's a daughter. You got to push her a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Of course. As a daughter, you want to, you know, I don't, I don't want my daughter to take no shit. I want her to. Uh, you want her to be tough. Yeah, you want her to be, be a tough. bad bitch. Yeah, I want her to be Yeah, a you don't want her to be well, a bitch, but a bad a, bitch. I want her to be a lady, but I want her to know that there comes a time where you have to take off your shoes and go, what, motherfucker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Look, so here's the thing. Yeah, I, not, I, not exactly. You, what, motherfucker? I hate when people will raise their kids. Well, I mean, I shouldn't talk about how anybody should raise their kids, but you tell all these little girls that there's a prince coming, and you read them all these stories about the freaking fairy tales, and there's a, there's a prince that's going to come to rescue you, and there's no fucking prince coming. There's no prince. Me, you, and Gabe, that's who's coming, bro. That's who's out there. I know the fuckers Be that careful. are out there. And the prince. I've met a prince or two. Those, ass those guys are assholes. This fucking guy, you hang out with princes and shit, huh? <laughs> you go to Abu Dhabi and nobody eating hummus, fucking with them and shit. And they throw tortilla chips. Let's, li let's listen to Mexican music. <laughs> oh you bad motherfucking world traveler and shit. So where are you from originally? Uh, I was born in San Diego, Chula Vista. Uh, grew up in Long Beach. Okay. That's where I've lived ever since. I and mean, I, mo I, moved to Bur I moved to Burbank. No, no, no. I uh, I was born in Harbor City and raised in Wilmington. Okay. Real close to Long Beach. Okay, I know where Wilmington is. That's, yeah. what, that's, what, that's the home of Gilbert Esquivel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah, VFW. The VFW, <laughs> the best taco. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How many of those VFW shows did you do with Gilbert or even with Rudy? 20 of them. The VFW. And the only reason why I did them was because of the 50 cent tacos. Right across I the street. I ain't gonna lie to you. Flores I meats. Gordon, yo, man. Yeah. Those are fucking delicious. I remember I brought a black drug dealer with me one time. That's how I roll. <laughs> he travels with his manager. I used to travel with a drug dealer just in case. You know what I'm saying? Remember the black drug dealer? Big yeah. yo guy, the football player? I took him down with me one time. This guy was fucked. I would, I would take him down even when he was more fucked up because then I could front and he would forget. You know what I'm saying? Like, give me another gram. I'll give it to you tomorrow. What happened last night? I don't know. <laughs> what did I do with all my coke? I have no idea. You were hanging out with white chicks. And, you know, you were giving them blow. Meanwhile, I'm taking the blow. He would pass it. Like, I go to his house. Dante, give me a gram. Man, I'm too fucked up. Come on, let's take a ride. I get him in the car with me, and I smoothen him up. On the way down, I clip a fucking gram from him. And then we get to Long Beach because he loved those tacos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he That's Wilmington, Wilmington. Wilmington. Yeah, and he'd yeah. eat fucking 20 of those tacos. <laughs> he loved them. <laughs> then he'd come back, bro, what's going on? I'm doing my blow. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Now, did Gilbert make you work clean when you worked at VFW? They always try. They always you, ask. Dude, you know what? I love it because you always told them to kiss your ass. Oh, and they like, always oh, no. try. He always yeah. tries. He always goes, you know. Joey, you got to work a little clean. I mean, he won't invite me to his church fucking services. You know, he, does, he puts on one of his pink suits and he goes to the church. You know, one time, dog, I swear to God, I did a uh, Navy base in El Paso, an Army base in El Paso for Ernie G. Oh, well, Fort Bliss. Ernie G booked it, and I went with Gilbert. And on the plane, I got, this is one of the funniest stuff. I get to the airport, LAX, and Gilbert's already got the orange suit. That he's going to wear for the show. The one he's going to wear for the show. It's on him. Wow. Dog, do you know that motherfucker had no luggage? He traveled like Oscar Madison. 
He had socks and a toothbrush. We got to El Paso, and he went right to the gig. I went back and showered. He had his suit on. We did the gig. We were leaving the next day. When I went to knock on his door, he slept with the suit on. Stop All it. he had to do was put his socks on, brush his hair, brush his teeth, and he was on the fucking plane. He was wow. like fucking Blade. What the? Because <laughs> only Blade would wear that orange fucking suit. You know what I'm saying? If he was Dracula, he was sleeping with them. I love all that old Friggin shit. In and out. Bro, how many fucking stories do we have about crazy comedy? Yeah. All of us, especially the Latino comedy scene. How fortunate we were that we Especially were. thinking how, you know, uh, what level we thought we were at when, when when we were there. Like, oh, it doesn't get better than this. Oh, that, that's it. We've re- That's it. It's, it's the best. Oh, yeah, you take a, r- a road trip to Visalia you take and you a r- yeah, you're on the road. You're on the road, man. Yeah. You know, world, world tour. Yeah. Ooh, we made we, hey, we made it to Fresno. Fresno, <laughs> ain't no stopping Visalia. us now, man. Lindsay, Lindsay, fucking what was, the, what was the best thing about uh, Visalia? Those, those poppy those chulo tacos. gigs out there in freaking uh, uh, oh, Indio, uh, no, yeah, uh, Calexico, area. Calexico, yeah, Calexico. Sebastian used to have. Remember all those Shit. fucking rooms we used to do. Sebastian had. What's the town next to San Diego? Real dark fences everywhere. <laughs> it's like a suburb of San Diego. You gotta go oh, beneath fuck. San Diego. What the heck? Fucking one night he gave me a gig. Yuma? There. Dark. No. no, no. Right in San Diego. It's just right before Mexico. It drops. San, San Isidro. Isidro. Santa Cito. Something San fucking <laughs> scary as shit. He made it sound like a religious figure. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, we lost Marilyn. You know, we lost mm-hmm. Marilyn. We lost a lot of Freddie. But it's funny. Like, even with Martin, one of my favorite Martin stories was when he was booking that fucking room. <laughs> on Wednesday nights and there was a soldier there and Martin said something about Bush and, and not the band the president oh, no this was this was at uh, Rick w- Ramos's room Rick Ramos's room over in Alhambra and it was like green like they were trying to turn it into like a Hollywood bar but they didn't know they were Sapphire Alhambra. fucking Sapphire yeah that, that but you were hosting I don't know what the hell I was you were doing hosting, for some dude. And you got into an argument with him, and, some, and, and he goes, listen, I'm going to bring up a comic, and we'll go outside and take care of this shit. <laughs> and I think he brought me up, and he went out and fought the motherfucker, and came back with his shirt ripped. And, dude, and I'm like, oh, my God, I love this motherfucker. This is my type of dude here. Yeah. <laughs> and after that, I need your number, dog, because I, I call him every week. <laughs> you beat up a dude. That's fucking brilliant. I love it. Tip and he went staff. right back on stage. Tip your staff. Like a soldier. <laughs> he went right back on fucking stage. That's when I was still real ghetto, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't let him do that in Virginia Beach. <laughs> no. <laughs> you still go to Virginia Beach a lot? We go everywhere. We go everywhere. No, I know you go I mean, everywhere. But I mean, I mean, like, yeah, definitely all the, you know, the R- Virginias and the D.C. area. I mean, you know, we're going to be there in the next couple weeks. At this point, where haven't you been? I mean, you're selling tickets all over the world. Where Russia. You been? Russia, uh, Mexico, and South Africa. But you've been to regular Africa. No. Egypt. Well, I mean, <laughs> not even regular Africa. I mean, the, the goal is to perform in South Africa. If we could do regular shows in Africa, I'd be there too. Well, but well, nothing for nothing for Africa. Hey, hey, Joe, hey, Joe is over there. Hey, Joe, no Africa? No lions, no leopards. No lions, tigers, and bears. We're going to be there. Egypt, shit South like that. We were, we were actually scheduled for Egypt, but it was the same week of the uprising with Mubarak. And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's one of those. I think we're, I think we're going to cancel it. And <laughs> no. Uh, Portugal, Spain, all that? Spain, We've yes. done Spain, yeah. No uh, shit. Road to Spain. How were they? You know, it was, it, was, it was a combination of locals and uh, military. Okay. So, it was so, no, no, it was cool. You know, the Spanish is a little bit different. They got the lisp. But, uh, you know, I get a lot of uh, Twitter followers and, and Facebook followers from Spain, and they're like, you know, come over here, watch your videos. And why not Mexico yet? Shit, I'm too, on, I'm, I'm too, I'm too paranoid. You know, I, I I'm, fr- Martin and I were friends with uh, Santana's security, and he's always telling us anytime he goes down to Mexico, man, he takes a, a big security team because you know the cartel people and stuff. Right, right. Oh yeah, I understand. Know, they they just want to kidnap you. Yeah, they want to kidnap you and dough. make some money. You know, it's funny. Like you, people are going to Cuba from Mexico now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People go on the day trips. How fucking crazy is that? There's day trips. Day well, trips. Yeah, and they won't stamp your passport. They're no, just they like, won't you know. stamp your passport. They hook it all up in Downey. Well, nice. the Cubans are there. There's a Cuban I wanna, restaurant. I want to go to Cuba. There's a Cuban restaurant. You go into Downey. You knock on the table, and somebody comes right over. They tell you where to take the fucking bike in the morning. You go to San Diego. <laughs> you drive down. I swear to God, I've heard this. You drive down. They take you to Cuba by six in the morning, and you're back by nine o'clock at night. How much is that? Not. Yet. It's people do it all the time to go visit their relatives. To bring, they bring back fucking food. They bring. Not. Do you got to be Cuban to go, or anybody can go? 
They're doing it out of Mexico. You like? Yeah, and if they're not stamping your passport, it doesn't really matter. They're not stamping your passport. They put a piece of paper in it. If you want it stamped, you stamp it. If you don't, you don't have to stamp it. People go from Canada too. I see Canada trips. A lot of Germans vacationing. Well, the Canadians and Germans. Yeah. But listen, don't believe the hype. Somebody went. A friend of mine went, and they saw. They said they saw Washington State apples at the hotel. But we have an embargo, so you know Mm -hmm. how life is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how (laughs) fucking life is. Yeah. So yeah, little, little give, a little take. It's because the, remember, the hotels people Cubans can't eat at the hotels. Cubans themselves can't go to their own hotels. For a Cuban to go to a hotel, I have to go to the hotel, and my sister can come visit me. You know what? I was reading some about. There's a different currency out there. Like yes. they, they have the currency, and then they have a different a currency. A different currency. And the different currency is the the, the tourists bring, uh, use it, and and the other fucks can't can't touch it. Can't touch. It's it. like two different worlds over there. If they catch you an American dollar, you do five years. It's That's like, crazy. Really, American money. But they, they got a hustle. Around. They get like there's 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 people out there selling newspapers, but all on the Sucking download. Dick, they're doing there's women, Dude, there there's, is there's pro- big prostitution. Yeah, that's why a lot of the Germans, that's why a lot of guys go. Older guys get in groups, and they say they're going down there for underwater activity. Yeah, <laughs> get down there, you know, that just you means they some, got them really wet. Yeah, you get some. <laughs> 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 you get some Cuban girl that's eighteen for three dollars. Oh, you know, they suck you and fuck you till from now till Tuesday. Yeah, that's why they go down there, man. It's wow. fucking crazy. It's really, uh, it's really crazy. You know, your boys always go down there. They've been there. In fact, my cousin's band opened up for Ozo Motley. Oh, okay. When Ozo Motley, when I did Stand Up Revolution with you guys, we, I talked to them, and they were telling me about a guy who got them weed. That was my cousin. My, it's my cousin's band. <laughs> He's in the National Cuban <laughs> fucking band. Him and my his sister and their parents. Uh, their parents are really my uncles. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, they're my cousins. How fucking crazy is that? I think it's crazy that there's freaking weed in Cuba. I mean, they got everything in Cuba. Yeah, but I mean, how, what's the punishment? I mean, if you get caught with a dollar and you go three years, yeah, they'll kill you. I mean, yeah. what the fuck if you get caught with weed? Cuba, but I heard it's really bad. Right it's Who not knows? like what we're getting here. <laughs> it's just really fucking not worth that. Just take some cookies. Yeah, just yeah. take a couple <laughs> cookies. For Speak, Doug, speaking of which, man. I was <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna eat the microphone. Are you hungry already? <laughs> no, I have, but I'm feeling. I'm feeling. Yeah, good. yeah, no. I'm this is taking power, man. This is good. This is. A, dog, I don't fuck around. It used to be Chibo Chu, the, the the red, the green hornets. They're the best. Uh-huh. Seventy milligrams, but two hundred twenty milligrams of CBDs. <laughs> These cookies are two hundred milligrams, and you see the fucking devil. I love the fact that you had to use your shoulders and all your arms to tear the packaging open, which tells you how how strong. It's got to be it's like, for it to be in that level of packaging. It's like made in fucking. Uh, it's that's like to make sure no kids accidentally tear that. No, open. no, and that's what it says. Don't give it to no fucking kids. They'll yeah, die. Keep out of reach of children. Keep out of reach of children. <laughs> in big red letters. I don't even eat those cookies in the house. My wife don't want nothing in the house. I gotta eat that shit outside. I gotta stash it outside like fucking. How you doing over the Lee? How you doing, Bubba? I'm all right. I'm what? What I have? Seventy milligrams. So yeah. I'm. I have a few Holy left. shit! I gave him a hundred on the ride <laughs> to San Diego. And we both got car sick. I had to pull over, and I'm thinking I'm gonna die. This is what he didn't see. I got out of the car because I, I get car sick. I always get car sick. Mm. But this cookie hit me. I ate half the cookie with him, and I popped the chibo chew like a fucking savage. And I get to this casino. It's Harris, and I gotta pull over. I, I mean, this is terrible. Doing ninety all the way to doing San Diego. Doing ninety the whole fucking way. You know, I don't play games. <laughs> I get out of the car. I look over. And there was a bouquet of flowers where somebody had died there. You know, oh. so it took my head somewhere else. <laughs> oh, I was like, I I'm gonna fucking shit. die. And these were dark roads. It was an Indian reservation. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm fucking dead. Did I you feel the spirits. <laughs> I felt the spirits. I would have used him as a shield. <laughs> but luckily, we made it. But we were so fucked up. And last night, I was so fucked up. Last night, I ate a whole one of these. You ate the whole thing. Oh, I was. F- I kept calling him. I'm going, Lee, come over. Eat this cookie. I go, your fucking grandmother suffered in Auschwitz for you to eat this cookie. <laughs> they suffered. They fucking suffered just for you to eat this fucking cookie. And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm not going to go over there. I go, my grandmother swam here from Cuba for me to eat this cookie. Your grandmother survived Auschwitz and came over here for you to eat this cookie. Each time you called, it was a different family member. Family member. Like, your grandfather burned in Auschwitz. <laughs> I was 
were so fucking stoned. And then last night it was the Russians who were going to come and give us edibles. So we were training for that. Now today they're giving us needles. Yeah, last night they were giving us edibles. Yeah, edibles. <laughs> Bro, I was gone. Even my wife kept looking at me. It's time for you to go to bed. <laughs> Finally, like at 9.30, I go, maybe I should get a cup of coffee and get this party started. And I go, fuck that. I'm tapping out. But, but, I gotta, Joy, but Joy, doesn't the fucking weed just tap into parts of your brain that are normally dormant, right? Listen. I'm retarded. <laughs> I don't know what dormant even means. All See, I like because you know you only use less than sixteen percent of your brain. Right. So they say so that the, the other the other part it is up. just fucking chilling. Oh, it opens so it up. So when you start doing drugs or yeah. hallucinogens, it opens up those other parts of the brain, and now you're living or existing in different realms and looking at things oh, different, fuck. which makes sense. Well, well, two weeks ago, I ate one of these by myself, <laughs> and I kept thinking, "This is the cookie that." Uh, remember the week Casey Kasem was missing? <laughs> nice. Dog, I kept sitting there. Maybe this is the cookie Casey Kasem made, right? And I'm going, this is what he ate. I'm saying this to myself in the living room, <laughs> watching Wally Kazam with my daughter. I'm like, dog, this is the cookie Casey Kasem made. This, and all of a sudden, they came with a thing. There's traffic on the 405. The president of Israel's in town. I'm like, oh, shit. That motherfucker knows where these cookies are. I kept saying that to myself. <laughs> like, he knows where Casey Kasem is, and he knows where they get the fucking pot cookies. But it don't work out. <laughs> I love it. I love giggling. You know, you love giggling. You love giggling. Oh, we God. like having a good time. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to get home. You're going to be <laughs> fine. You're going to be fine. That's fine. There's a Puerto Rican restaurant <laughs> right down the corner named Mofongo. We can make a pit stop. Mofongos. And they got Coco Rico. They got everything just like in Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah? Every big-time Puerto Rican comes up here to eat. They said that they one serve stuff like lechon and... and all that uh, shit. And then they got a criollo across from... Uh, that's where I went with my wife on Sunday. A criollo, Cubano criollo over on Burbank across from... Uh, Costco. Mm. Not bad. You get the pork chunks with the black beans and rice. Solid. That sounds great. Everything else, I don't, I don't vibe I'm for. hungry right now. Lee had the chicken. The chicken was good. Lee's had the garlic chicken, the Cuban garlic oh, chicken. Oh, that's always good. Before we get off here, we talk, i got to talk to you about something. <laughs> How strong is Chan's Dragon in? Oh, come on. You know, I grew up in that oh, motherfucker, right? Oh, shit. Since I was 15, I've been going to get those steak egg rolls, stick. Those egg rolls the size of baby arms? Those are the best <laughs> fucking egg rolls in the world. You dip it in the mustard <laughs> and your nose hairs sift out and shit like that. That's good stuff. The food is good and that bar looks like some shit went down. Let me tell you. Deals, things have happened <laughs> at that bar. Hits yeah, have been bro. made at that bar. Yeah. Listen to me. We used to go there. We, You know what I mean? In high school, you have driver ed. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have driver ed. So the teacher's name was George McGrath. He smoked camel with no filters, and he had a mustache, and it was orange from smoking camels. His fingers were orange, and his teeth were orange. So we used to call him Camel Breath, right? Right to his face, Camel Breath, come on. So we'd take over the car. You had to sign up. So you had to sign in for when you want a driver at. There was no driver at with us. He did blow. We had this guy. So we'd get in the fucking car. We were sophomores in high school. We'd get in the car. And we go, where we going? First, we got to stop at the liquor store. Guys, you're going to make me lose my job. God, what the fuck, McGrath? Come on. Let's go get some fucking beers. It's a party. It's a celebration, fellas. You know what I'm saying? All right, get an eight-pack. We got a little eight-pack because they were nips. Nips are seven-ounce beers. Then the next thing, we got to stop at fucking uh, Chan's Drag. Guys, I can't have food in the car. Come on, McGrath. We'll buy you some egg rolls. A fucking steak on a steak. You motherfuckers. And we go to Chan's in high school and get two egg rolls in a package and get steak on a stick, and then and we'd eat them, and he'd take us back. It was the cars that his side had the brakes on, too. Yeah. So you know what I'm talking about? But the best was it was just me and him alone. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to talk about this guy because he won't be my friend on Facebook. So fuck <laughs> him. <laughs> He's mad because I put a bet in with him, his buddy. Come Mr. on, camel breath. Uh, Mr. Palute, and we didn't pay him, so he never wanted to talk to me again. So when I saw he was on Facebook, I hit him up, so... Me and him, it was like I was like a sophomore in high school in front of Carvel on 38th Street, Union City. I'll never forget that, dog. And he goes, you got any blow? And I took out a double-barrel shotgun. It was a, a glass with two things that went into your nose with a spoon at the end. So you opened up the baggie, and you took the thing, and you went like this, and then you just took the two things in your nose, went, and it went in both your... Bro, this is 1981. Double-barrel right? shotgun. Double and I would always get fucked up and sit on it because it was made out of glass. I had more cuts oh. in my ass than fucking... <laughs> And you're and you're afraid of needles. Oh my God! It was I go home. <laughs> Why is my ass hurt? And also the next day I have a scab on my ass from cutting myself. Who was your friend who paid the bartender there to karate chop him? Oh, Roger Holloway. We were kids. He'd go in there and go. We'd all walk in. The guy's name. The guy was as Chinese as could be, but he had like a white name. 
So he, when you go in there, ah, you doing, Gabriel? I said, ah. I thought that, and you go, Charlie. What, his name was like Charlie. He retired. <laughs> you sure you weren't just calling him Charlie? No, I don't know what his <laughs> name was. Because I could see you doing that. But I had a friend that when he'd go in there, automatically, he just put his neck down. And my friend, he, my, my friend would go in, he'd be talking to us, and all of a sudden he'd go, hold on one second. Charlie, come in. Charlie would come over and put his neck down, and Roger would go, ha! Ah! And karate chop, and give him like a 20. Let me get a drink. Give everybody a fucking drink. Here's a 50. Let me karate chop. You got a karate chop. And dog, it was the funniest thing in the world. It was a dude that just let you karate chop. Just let him karate chop you. But we go in there. That, now it's not. But if you get on that, on that road, and instead of going straight, you make the right. You're eight minutes out of the city. Mm -hmm. So I don't care who you went in there with. You go in there with Johnny AA. I haven't had a drink or a taste of Coke <laughs> in eight years. You give him a pork chop, like a rib and shit, bro. Mm -hmm. And also you put a beer in front of him or a zombie. They had those zombies with the straws that four people could drink. Right. Bro, you have a zombie in there, you get the seven-year itch. That place was a parking lot. People would just go back and forth into New York City in the 80s and 90s wow. to get cocaine and go ha back there. Now, the way that it looks now, is it the same way it looked back then? Since fucking 1980, it has not changed. Those chairs are the same. Same chairs. The art are the same. Everything the same. In fact, yesterday, I don't know if when you get by, my, uh, Georgie lives around the corner from my friend's funeral parlor, Veneri. Mm -hmm. Veneri won the assemblyman yesterday in District 8, so you got friends in Jersey, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> You got friends in Jersey now. He won the 8th District fucking freeholder. But I remember going in there with him after missing persons. We went nice. to see missing persons one night. We were all fucked up. And the bar, and the guy came over and he's like, huh, what, what can I get you? And I'm like, let me get an egg drop soup. My friend's like, let me get oh, something. sounds good. And, my, and he goes, let me get a chicken noodle soup. And I fucking almost killed him. You don't know what a chicken noodle soup and chance. <laughs> but now they got on the menu. They got chicken noodle soup on the menu at chance now. But man, those, those egg rolls, that's, that's what you go for. The egg Those roll, egg rolls. The pork oh. fried rice is delicious. Remember Everything in there was the yeah. fucking. We the, fucked up some shit. Oh, I got, I got the, I got a picture of the pork fried rice. <laughs> you take man. pictures of the food too. I sweet. take pictures. I got a picture of the fucking egg roll <laughs> on here. That's how strong I am. I don't fuck around, dog. Yeah, I got For a picture jazz. of the egg roll somewhere. Look at that. I think we've eaten there what, like four times already. Look at that fucking egg roll. Oh, God. that don't even look like an egg roll, dude. Well, it looks like a. That's a fuck. That's a rib. A rib, whatever the fuck it is. I'm sorry, egg roll, a rib. I'm fucked up. What do you want? You just show me a picture of a rib and call it an egg roll. I'm like, come on. There's the monster. Nice. Yeah, she's a big fucking girl. I'm very lucky. Uh, what the fuck are we talking about? Egg rolls, Chinese food, Mr. McGrath, camel breath. Who gives a fuck? So Everything's good, Joey. When you were in Burbank, now you said you lived in Burbank. How old were you when you lived in Where'd you go to high school? I went to high school, Long Beach Wilson High School, class of 1994. I lived in uh, Burbank for what, about seven, eight years ago, Martin? Oh, more than that. It was Actually, eight. no, no, no. Yeah, over 10. Yeah, over yeah, 10, but, uh, yeah. probably about 11 years ago. Uh, my roommate was Rick Gutierrez. Rick Gutierrez and I lived together for two years. And then I moved to the house. That's started writing scripts. And then, that's, yeah. That's and before <laughs> you opened up the studio in San Antonio. <laughs> I love Rick Gutierrez, by the way. Rick's one of the best dudes out there. After he pukes and shit, he's one of the best dudes out there. I love Rick with all my heart. I miss Rick. I miss seeing Rick around at the club because he was always giving me a laugh, you know? He would always be mad at something. As soon as you walked in, there's no air conditioning in here, bro. We got we to gotta straighten these people out. You go talk to them. He's still mad at something. He's always I mad really, at somebody. I love him. He's always, yeah. He's not mad. He's just a parent. <laughs> Oh, by the way, can I give a little plug for his special? <laughs> what is it? His special comes out June four, uh, 14th. On what? Uh, on uh, Nouveau TV, and then it's going to come out on Netflix. All right. His one-hour special. Rick Gutierrez, bad motherfucker. I haven't called in before the thing. He's a good man, Rick Gutierrez. Look who's calling in. Steve motherfucking Simone. Nah. Uh oh. He's oh, probably shit. looking at pictures of fucking Ali Riley Rice <laughs> jumping up and down with, with, with a little cape on right now in his bed. That's crazy motherfucker. One of the sweetest guys in the fucking world. Is he not one of the sweetest guys? On. Oh, yeah. He's nuts. He's nuts. With his little new haircut. Kid Steve. When you were in high school, did you have a dream of fucking doing this shit? Man, I, I just wanted my dream was to finish high school, Joey. And you too? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't finish high school. I had to go back. I didn't finish either. Yeah. I quit like my senior year like a jerk off. You got all the way to the end and just bowed out. I quit uh, September, but then I went back in December, and then I worked double hard, and they told me I was short three credits, so I told them to suck my dick. Yeah. I took my GED yeah. before I got locked up. That's so funny. I, I uh, They told me I was missing a, an English class, and then uh, they let me do 10 book reports and gave me my high school diploma. 
10 fucking book reports. I went to the library, got a book of bibliographies, and just copied that shit on, turned it in, I marched. It was a proud moment. And that was it. And that was it. And no no big shebang, no big fucking nothing. You finished high school, though. I finished high okay. in the summer. Okay. Yeah, How about I had, you? I had Lee, summer Lee fucking was an honor student. No, I wasn't. Look at him. He's a savage. How you feeling over there? You see the devil yet? It's coming. Okay, as long as he's coming. <laughs> when did you fucking think you could do stand-up? What fucking made you one day get what? up and go for you know, I, 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 first time I ever got on stage, I was 10 years old. It was a school talent show after I saw Eddie Murphy Raw. And then uh, I didn't do nothing until I was about 18, 19. And then I started watching Comic View on BET. And there was, every time I'd see these guys, I'm like, oh, my God. I, I know I'm funnier than this. I haven't done comedy yet, but I know I'm funnier than this. I'm like, really? This is making it to TV? What am I doing in my living room? So watching Comic View is what really pushed me. And where's the first place you said, I'm going to go down there and once I was able to, I mean, I'll, you know, everybody wants to play the Laugh Factory. I mean, back then it was always, uh, you know, the Laugh Factory. There was those shows that they'd have on TV, with like a uh, uh, Comedy Express, or they'd have a Comic Strip Live from the Laugh Factory, and uh, you know, it was either uh, Bob Saget hosting or some of these other old school '80s guys. And I'm like, oh man, that'd be that'd be cool one day to play at the Laugh Factory. And then you hear the other stories of like Pryor and Robin Williams, and and uh, you know, uh, they I can't even think of his name. Yeah, all, oh. all playing over at the comedy store. And so then it was like, oh, I want to play the comedy store. And then, you know, when people started talking about working at clubs across the country, the improv's the one that covers the, the, the country. There's, you know, there's only one Laugh Factory, one comedy store, but the improv's the, that's the, the, the Starbucks of the comedy clubs, and that's where you want to be. That's where you're going to get paid and make money. The other ones, you're just going to go grind it. How about you, brother? When did I know? You know what? I started late, Joey, but I, you know, I... I always wanted to do it. I always made my friends laugh. I always made people laugh. And then uh, I always thought, well, I can make people laugh uh, because they know me. What about strangers? You know, and I'd go to comedy shows and I'd see somebody talk about like a, uh, they do a bit about a dog, right? And I thought, holy shit. Because I, I used to think they were making it up. I thought it was all improv. I didn't know that me they too, worked me out too. a That's set. What I, thought. I thought, holy fuck, yeah, to do that. just that great. You got to know everything about everything. Like, like, I really thought that you had to be informed on every single topic that they were, I didn't know it was a set. I thought these guys just knows that shit off the top of his head. And I was taking a speech class uh, in, uh, shit, probably in 99. And every speech I did, I mean, I, not to sound like a dick, but it was funny. I mean, and I did it mostly because I wanted to keep their attention. I hated people looking, because when other people did a speech in, in school, you just start doodling, you look out the yeah. window, I'm like, fuck that. I want to keep the attention on me, so I made it funny, and I threw a lot of sexual innuendo in there. I mean, it wasn't crazy, but there was a lot of sexual, I mean, I did a, a, a speech on baking cookies, and I made it sound like fucking the oven, and m like jacking off, I'm, dude, it sounded like you were jacking off, and then you were finally sticking it into the oven, and this <laughs> dude came up to me, and he's like, I don't know what the hell you're doing in this class, but why aren't you doing comedy? And I said, dude, I, you make, I make you laugh because you know me. He goes, no, 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 no. I go to comedy clubs regularly. He goes, you made me laugh every single week. He goes, and you're not a comedian. He goes, everything you said was funny. He goes, I don't know what you're doing with your life or why you're in school right now, what you're trying to do, but you were supposed to be a comic. And I was like, what the f And it just, like, and I you always... You were in the service, right? I was in the Marines for, like, two months. Okay. And then you said, fuck <laughs> that. He's flat-footed. Well, no, no, my foot. I have an extra bone on my foot. I could I'm double-jointed. I salute. I look like I was fucking around. <laughs> but I can't put my arms, my hands straight. So he thought I was fucking with him. And uh, it was just a nightmare, bro. <laughs> you <enjoy laughs> You would think with an extra bone, man. That'd be kind of like an advantage <laughs> well, in the military. Yeah, yeah. This like guy's like actually got extra shit. bones, man. He could, he could fire two pistols if he's got double... <laughs> <you know? laughs> that hand but no they got the boot uh me no i didn't i, I you know i didn't do nothing special uh you know i barely finished high school went to school at long beach city college for how long? uh for half a semester <laughs> i took that i took that free money that they gave me bought a stereo in a car and then just said eh, you know you I'm took gonna, the student loan i took the student you loan remember when money. they told you you could get money like that's what happened to me oh when man when, when i got that check in the mail i'm like shit, shit. <laughs> and then they said it's a loan you gotta pay it back fuck you <laughs> I'll pay when when I got so all you had to do was stay in school for six credits a semester. You have to pay the loan back. I was like, fuck, I could do this till I'm ninety. I'll never pay these fucking <laughs> loans back. Well, you know what, bro? I paid all the loans back except the last one. I just paid it off last year. Wow. wow. They came back twenty years later. I thought I was out of the weeds. Yeah, I thought you know after seven years you were good, but no, yeah, no, no, they no, came they'll, back. They'll hunt you down. They wanted nine. 
I think I got them down to four and they went away. So what are you going to do? But you pay for all your fucking sins, bro. They don't mm. fuck around. Yeah, no, they'll they'll show, you know yeah. when they show up? When you buy a house. Yeah. That's when the screw You run a credit check. Up. Something happens. They, they, they're going to find you. You know, bro, I'm a fucking crazy guy. You've known me a long time. I have known you for Joe quite knows some me. Time. Martin knows me. I'm a crazy guy. And I love doing this podcast. <laughs> when Lee and I started doing this podcast, I wanted it to be funny. But I wasn't going to sit up at night and write jokes. Mm-hmm. But the purpose of this podcast was that for me, bro, they always put things out of context when you're growing up. Especially for guys that are Spanish or black or Chinese yeah. or whatever. Yeah, it's like, and I came English. from fucking Cuba. I didn't, I didn't know no English. One thing, I, then I was very insecure because of that. And then my parents did numbers. You know, they were in the numbers mm. operation. They made money. Plus, they went to Santa Rita. So now, beside worrying about my language, I was insecure about that they were going to find out my mother had a bar and that people got stabbed there. And then when my stepfather shot a dude when I was eight on 148th Street, I was I was part of the Adams family. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. For Latinos. So I've had all these insecurities. This podcast is a funny podcast. And I like to have a good time. But this podcast is to let people know, dog, that you can do whatever the fuck you want. And if, and if that's, if you're not living proof of that. Thank you. That's why I wanted you guys to come on here. That was the main reason because... A lot of comedians, young comics from the Valley, little Mexican dudes. You know, it's like when we showed up with those kids last year, Felicia's kids. A lot of kids look up to you. They see you on Comedy Central, Gabriel, and they see what you're doing. And when they find that I'm a comic, they come over and they start making fucking noises and bling and all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, look at these fucking little Gabriels, you know? You know, when you meet these drunk idiots at a bar and they all want to be Doug Stanhope, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. But when you meet these young kids and they all tell you, you know, when I was eight, I thought I wanted to be a fireman. Right? When you're eight, you got two choices, a cowboy and fireman. If I tell you what I really wanted to be when I was, like, t- for two years, you guys are going to die. I wanted to be fucking Mexican. Stop it. But not you Mexican <laughs> motherfuckers. I wanted you wanted, like, the Pancho Villa. You wanted <laughs> with the, the bandoleros Pancho, and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with the bullets. I, th- I wanted an uncle like that. Like, I, I kept saying to my mom, don't we have an uncle down there in Mexico that I could go live with? Because that's what I really wanted to be. I want to be a Mexican with the fucking things. Because you know, when, when I was don't, 10. The, the we don't need no stinking bad. Yeah, we don't need no stinking fucking. You know, when I watched Zoot Suit, I lost my mind. I heard a couple of years ago they were thinking of remaking it. And I was like blocking You can't, that no. Shit. You can't remake that. Even James Edward almost was like, dog, please. <laughs> I will shoot you motherfuckers up. You understand me? But it's really weird, all jokes aside, that you have done that. You've let. Uh, a bunch of people know that you could do things, man. It is possible. I mean, I, you know, as a kid, first of all, I grew up with just my mom. My dad wasn't in the picture. We were on welfare and Section 8. We were living in uh, not the greatest part of Long Beach. It's right on the border of the east and the west, which uh, was really interesting when the gangs would meet because, you know, they, they would basically duke it out right there in that neighborhood. You know, it's always east side, west side, and then, you know, that, that was it right there on that line on uh, Henderson. In, uh, in the city of Long Beach. And my mom and I, we lived there for oh, about 14, 14 years. And then finally we, uh, we got approved for Section 8. And we were able to get a better house. Well, a better place to live, not a house. And your father recently showed up. My father recently he showed up. He showed up like Rene Garcia, one of those gays. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they did comedy here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's a couple comics. Oh, you mean Sandoval, right? Uh, no, Rene no, no, Rene Garcia's from Houston. I'm oh, sorry, oh, that's okay, my dog. Oh. There's a little comedian, a Mexican comedian. Dog, the, the, guy that, the guy that Mike Robles was, uh, was, was grooming, I guess? You could he's, be, got, he's got glasses, right? Yeah, you could be doing a show in Alaska. <laughs> and he'll come in and look around. He always comes in. Though. Bro, I didn't know you were here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know you were here. I didn't even know they did comedy in this motherfucker. I just happened to walk in to use the phone. I heard your voice. <laughs> And you're like, really? Just like that? You know what I'm saying? Meanwhile, his phone has everybody's app on it. Right. Yeah. Everybody, you yeah. know, it's it's crazy. There's always these comics that whenever you do in a room, they just show up. They They're in the same town and over. shit. But yeah, that's what, that's what my dad did. He showed up and uh, I thought it was going to get weird. I thought he was going to ask for money. I thought it was going to get like uncomfortable and uh, he turned out to be okay. He just wanted to let me know I had a couple of sisters in Mexico and that, uh, you know, he was around and if I had any questions. And you're tight with him now? Very we're not. We're not tight. But you I talk. mean, uh, you know, we'll we'll communicate. It's rare, but you know, we, we do. It's it's a lot better than it was before. Right. He sure. he checks in on you. You check. He, in he on checks him. in. You he don't check in. in. Uh, not yet. You can't. Uh, it's it's still too. You know. And then since my mom passed, then it's been a little bit. You know, I pushed it back even it further because now it feels yeah. awkward to talk to my dad after my mom. You know. It's fucking rough family, huh? Yeah. Family's a motherfucker sometimes. I don't really deal with anybody anymore. I mean, I got one sister that I really uh, talk to, and uh, her daughter, my niece, 
and that, that's about it as far as family is concerned. I don't talk to my brother anymore, my other sisters. You know, everyone's estranged. We're just kind of like, that's it. They're, you know, they're, uh, people say that I changed, but I'm like, nah, did I change or did you change? You know, and then, like I said, since my mom's passing, that's when everything was like, okay, you know, we were all doing this for her. And now that she's not here. Now that she's not here, we don't have to bullshit each other. No, 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 no. no. Wow. It's amazing. You have the same problem, too? You know, I'm just having like a total weed moment right now. Okay. So? Then no, fuck, no, no, I'll leave you alone. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. No, no, no. It's a, this is a good thing. You, you mentioned where, where Gabe came from. You talk about where you came from. I didn't come from a great neighborhood. Mm. Why us? What? What? No, no, no. Seriously, because you said, you know, all these kids are getting hope and stuff. How the fuck did we get out? Why were we so lucky, so fortunate? Because there's people that I grew up with that that are like you know. Or more driven, or well, just they're still well, they still they're stuck. Like, well, you know what? They're stuck. But Joey, it's like some people. It's like I, I, you know, I love, um, you know, wh- where I came from. It taught me a lot, you know. But but it is a a, a gang area. It's a it's a gang, you know, place, and and people are real proud of of uh, of, of you know gang related stuff well martin and i always used to do this thing it's that it's that line we always say uh it that's all i know bro that's all that's, i that's know that's all i know and it's i'm from boulevard nights the first freaking uh, uh cholo movie ever bro boulevard fucking boulevard nights, nights bro. Well, yeah yeah yeah. so but anyway proud of the this fact dude this, they, they didn't even have mexicans playing the gang members on boulevard nights and this dude looked up and he goes that's all when you run car your barrio you're a chavala that's all i know and I'm looking at that, and I'm like, this motherfucker, that's all you fucking know. There's and a he's lot proud of shit it. to know. There's a lot of shit to Talk, know. It's like watching Gangland. You ever stuck in a hotel on a Friday morning? <laughs> Any town, you start watching Gangland, you listen to those people speak, and you're like, that could have been us. Yeah, it very well could have been us. I that could have been me. I see people, I see my, my, my you know, relatives of, of friends, like people that I grew up with real close to them, and I see... How they what the fuck they're spelling? How they're spelling on Facebook? First of all, and some of the shit that people are saying, and you're like, holy fucking balls! Like, you know, I talk a lot of shit on Twitter. You know, I'm talking about coming on faces and do whatever the fuck it is. He so does. they're probably looking at me like I'm a crazy <laughs> fuck. But I'm looking at them like, fuck it. I mean, at least I'm enjoying my fucking life. What the fuck? At least I got a fucking dictionary. You know? <laughs> yeah, dude, it, it drives me crazy. But it's like. It's like, th- we're no different, but how did we get... Because, t- dude, it was crazy where you grew up. It was insane where Fluffy grew up. You didn't have a dad. He didn't have a dad. My dad was loaded half the time or most of the time. But we still managed to fucking, you know, come out okay. Some people come out okay and some people get trapped. What, what is it, Joey? That's, that's the moment I was having. And also the, the, the level of opportunities that are available <laughs> back, especially, you know, back then. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it is. It's it's crazy. You know it's how crazy. how us and why us. Yeah, I, dog. For me, I've been trying to figure out this question. I finally got. And I'm gonna tell you guys the truth. What it is. You know, I, I tell stories. I tell stories about waking up next to a piece of dog shit and doing coke all night. You know, for years. You know, it was food, coke, and whatever the fuck I was doing for 30 years. But I tell you, whenever I got really down, I would always go back to my mother. And I would always answer like, well, she didn't come from Cuba for me to be doing this. And how would she feel today? Wow. How would she feel today if she knew what I was fucking doing, you know? If she was looking down, you know? And, and that always So the mother strive. figure is the biggest influence. Anything, bro. I just yeah, had yeah. this thing inside of me that this was not going to happen to me. This was, I can't let this happen to me. I went to prison. I don't want to let suit her down. On. I was a fucking bagel chef in prison. And I almost blew up the thing one day, so they made me the stock clerk. And, you know, guys, you know, I was in there. And once you had, listen, I had a guy at gunpoint begging me for his life when he had handcuffs on. You understand me, bro? When I went out to that car, I didn't know what to feel. But I know this was not what I wanted to do. And one day you make a decision. And you look at your cousins or your friends from the neighborhood. And you go, you know what? I might not want to be a fucking doctor. But I know I don't want to be one of these motherfuckers, as bad as that sounds. That's how I looked at it. I just know the people I didn't want to be like. Like, that's it. This is not what I want to be. And, and not everybody in there is, is crazy. Or no, or no, 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 Not all no, of them. No, but but no, there's, but no. there's that, that, that handful of people that are just like, holy shit, you're never going to get it. You're never going to get it. And people get stuck in their lives, and they look at from a different perspective. Yeah. Yeah. You know, bro, people look at us and go, do you remember when you were first starting Fluffy? Your first three years and you were broke? And people look at you and go, what the fuck is wrong with you? Mm-hmm. You know, what the fuck was wrong with us? You're right. What made you get up one morning? What, what, what? I mean, and say, for five years, I'm going to fucking starve. Yeah. 
Because we all in this room yeah, have we one yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we, make sacri sacrifice. we all starve for five fucking years doing this. You've seen it, Joe. You've seen it. You know, you fucking starve doing yeah. this. You you go from hand to mouth for a couple weeks or... Then and Sebastian takes away 25 bucks. Right. And he fucking Sebastian promised you 50, but Shank Rudy, shows up. Rudy <laughs> gives you that, that, I told him that at the Christmas party one year. I think he got mad at me. <laughs> I was all loaded. <laughs> I said, fuck you, Sebastian. <laughs> I remember driving out to Chino. You told me you were going to give me 50 bucks. You know, I had a big-ass truck, bro. A fucking eight-cylinder fucking truck. I was driving to Chino in from Carson. <laughs> this motherfucker gave me 25. <laughs> my oh cell my phone God. got filled, got disconnected. Bro, I'm fucking 30 years old going through that shit. Please. What I, the fuck? Bro, I didn't get into comedy until I was 30. Mm. Yeah. 30. So at 35, I was dying. You know what I felt like at 35? I was fucking dying. I had abandoned every credit card again. Yeah, every through, time. Every, all your every resources. time you take a fucking student loan, they send you another card. I had Discover card. Oh, I had those bitches <laughs> on the ropes, Jack. I had those money because they used to send you checks. In those days, they would send you a card and a check. But on a Saturday and Sunday at the bank, they couldn't check. They couldn't cash. They couldn't check the checks. Oh, to see if they were legit. Yeah. So even if you were over the limit. I'd be a fucking the hub on Saturday night, cat banging those motherfuckers out every Monday morning, nine oh one. Mister Diaz, bring that check back immediately right now. Fuck you, that thing is gone. <laughs> that thing is gone, <laughs> gone. Don't call back here. And next Monday they call uh, again. Did you cash? They gave me like four of those. I held on to one. I figured out as a comic how to get cash advances off American Express. I would have to borrow five bucks from you to get gas. And go to a casino in Colorado, mm. and then the guy would call in because casinos always get your bump, cash, whatever. The, if you need money, watch a casino go to work, motherfucker. Yeah. If you got thirty dollars on there, they'll get twenty-seven fifty for you. <laughs> Those casino bitches, they don't fuck around, Jack. So it, no, it's very. I always think about it every day. How fortunate. It's and I know that you didn't come from no fucking wealthy family. No. Nobody pushed you. I know you didn't. I know Lee didn't. I know my parents had money when I was growing up. When my mother died, I got the pull, plug pulled out. And that's almost the same thing. It's even worse. Having it, you know, going from having your own room, having with your own TV, flock. your own cable box, your own, your own air conditioner, your own carpet. My mother would bring up the food to me like a prince, you know what I'm saying? Mm. To share in a room with two dudes farting, scratching their nuts, no air conditioner, a fucking dog, you know. It was when my mother died, I sat there and I was waiting for the fucking who would offer me the out. Like, you know, so. But it's just imagine uh, fluff. Because statistically, I, we're not supposed to be. No, no, this is just no, 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 no. Hell no, not even close. Mm -mm. Broken, broken homes, living in bad areas, on the welfare, just you know, barely getting by. I mean, and I was freaking doing drugs when I was a kid. I was a kid. I was thirteen the first time I got stoned. Which, you know, I think that might have helped. <laughs> No, it helps because it opens yeah, up. Some it opens up that fucking part of the brain that's usually sleeping. And you start scamming. You start yeah. figuring out how can I smoke yeah, more what kind pot. Of <laughs> did you <laughs> smoke <laughs> pot when you were young, Gabriel? Uh, I did. I did. Did you like it? You know what? For the time, it worked out for me. It did because I, I was stressed out a lot, and I mean, it just I had no responsibilities. I didn't have a family to worry about. Worry about. I didn't have a son. I didn't have pets. It was nothing. It was just it was just me. You know, and was, I, I wasn't drinking. So that was my uh, that was my release. You're not a drinker. Now. Now you are. Yeah, but I don't. You know, I don't smoke. No more. That's it. It's no. over. No more. No, I gotta save the throat. <laughs> no, gotta, that's the mama. That's, that. that's, 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 that's the money maker. That's the envelope. Right the, yeah, here. that's the envelope. <laughs> <laughs> and now uh, you got this movie coming out, which mm -hmm. is this is the plateau. And this was taped. Uh, uh, we did this earlier this year. February. February. February Where 28th at? at the uh, SAP Arena, across the street from the uh, Improv. Caddy Corner. San Jose. No San Jose. Shit. Yeah, where the Sharks play. Wow. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it looks it, fucking it's, beautiful. It, it, it was a lot of fun to make, and uh, I was excited. I mean, just because, you know, San Martin, I go, I think it's legit to say that it's the first time a, a Latino's been put in a platform like that as far as a comedian's concerned, to be given that level of stage and an opportunity. So, That's amazing. Like, for me, I just wanted to make sure it looked, it looked the best, and it, and it was the best stuff that I could put out. And what do you feel? Like, did you, like, again, did you ever, when we were fucking around, doing K Locos? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> With Mike Robles. Yeah, but you think of a show like that. Listen, 
when we move to this town, what's the what's the fucking what's when you sit down with your manager, what do they say to you? You're gonna get good at comedy, I'm gonna put you in comedy rooms, you're gonna either get a deal, you're gonna get put on a show, you're gonna do Letterman and Leno. Yeah. That, that, well, that was the plan back then. If you're a manager, that's all you needed to do. I'll get you on Letterman or I'll get you on Leno. Let's come on, let's get you a development deal. If nothing else, let's just get some money for that. You know, try to get you a sitcom. But K Maybe Locos get you in the movies. opened up a door for you. K Locos was, uh, was a cable show uh, that ran, I want to say, what, like five years maybe? Yes. Uh, it, was, it was produced by a comedian named Mike Robles, uh, uh, who, you know, he, I, give him his, I give him his dues. He, 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 he did, put he me did. on that show. Yeah, he, he put did. me on that show, and he highlighted me every chance he could in commercials and, you know, all the different uh, ads that they had. And, uh, so I, I own quite a bit. That show, plus the fact that if you have a, uh, a show that they're running basically, what, every, what, five, six hours? Yeah. They were running. They were rerunning it, it during the day and rerunning it. At no night. matter how many times they played it, people watched it, though. Every time you were on, if it you, was, if it you was cruised on. by your TV and you saw it, you would stay tuned. People you know, would watch it. Yeah, they because there, the there was no DVRs or nothing then. So if there's a comedy show yeah. and you liked it, you sat there and you and stuck you with it and you watched it. Yeah. And of course, they're running the 20 commercials in between for the tours. People and would stuff. get together in people's houses to watch Que Locos. Yeah. I mean, it was an event to watch Que Locos. That, I mean, I, don't, I think people don't. I mean, it was, it was big. I mean, because it really did put put a lot of people's faces out. But you I think about I mean, it. Did, was George? I mean, George was. And George, because of Que Locos. Because George of Que Locos, became, right? Yeah. Again, yeah. for those of you that don't know, Que Locos was a uh, stand-up comedy show on the Galavision Network uh, a few years back, and uh, that that shows the one that definitely put me on the map. It opened a door. Georgia, it, yeah. But it also, you were the fucking real star of that show. Thinking back, how it went down, how the commercials ran, how the marketing ran, and they kept running you. It was something that uh, I remember just hearing. Fucking Gabriel, can I go? Wow, <laughs> it's amazing. You know, because and, everybody and thinks the Tonight Show. You guys do the fucking no, Tonight and, Show. And I did the Tonight Show uh, about seven times. Before that? No. no. After. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, that was it but was nothing. That, that was the first thing. That was the first thing, that really. And think about it. They got you when you did the Tonight Show. It was easy. What now. I what I think was amazing is that it was on a Spanish speaking absolutely uh, station. Yeah. But it was in English, and so everybody tuned. It was something cool that people could tune into, but it was weird because I would typically never watch that station. Unless that show was unless on. that show was on. Yeah, but it's it's but I knew that it was on that station. So regardless of how. Uh, remote because a lot of people will think oh well that's that station doesn't get enough attention no if it's a good product people will fucking go to it is Galavision sure. still on uh, I don't <laughs> know. that's a good question I don't even know if it is because I know they got the, you know it's obviously Telemundo Univision uh, they got the Mundo's network they got uh, what's the new one uh, Nuvo Nuvo's the new one yeah. nu- Nuvo is the uh, is the new CTV CTV it turned into Nuvo Nuvo yeah Without the man of steel. Without the man of steel. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, what's going on, you bad motherfucker over there? It's part of Univision, I guess. Is it part of Univision? Oh, Lee, his fiance is a Mexican woman. Yeah. Beautiful Mexican girl, goes to USC law school. So he's living the dream right now. He's eating enchiladas on oh. Sundays. When I met Lee, he was a smooth 120 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him now. That's what happens. When he got a call, you got to hear his voice when he's calling me. To tell me how she gave him a care package, because a Mexican mom will hook your ass up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they give him a little extra more because he's the white kid, so they give him. A, just a little. Way, right? yeah, cool. <laughs> it was just crazy listening to you guys talk because she, she gets an angle with it. It's like where they film Training Day, and just that's where the, she lives. Yeah, and I go down there every week, and like apparently they recognize me now because I, I kind of stand out a little bit in Inglewood, and it's uh, <laughs> it's just crazy because we're trying to get her to move out now. <laughs> and she's oh, the mom's a little bit weary because like the mom's like sixty years old and everyone knows her there and she can walk to the stores. It's her home. Yeah, Lee, but it's, it's like home. it's weird. Like coming from where I came from, like I, you think, oh, you want to get out of there, but like at a certain point, maybe you don't. Like I'm kind of I'm kind of worried about them moving up here because like maybe she doesn't want to move out of there. Like it's just a, it's a like they found a guy rotting in a car at the L Super parking lot last week, and th- that's the supermarket they go to. Wow. It's, it's crazy. And That's the guy crazy. was rotting in the car. <laughs> He'd been in there that yeah. long. They said he could have been up in there for up to a month. Nobody, nobody noticed. noticed the fucking car. No, they didn't notice until it started stinking. When did this happen? Last week. See, now that's news. <laughs> no, and it's just, but it's, uh, and it's crazy how you won't go to Mexico, 
Because her mom did the... She did, like, the illegal coming in in the backs of cars things. She left a kid there. But she won't go back. Mm. She has a sister who comes up every six months to see them, to see her. But she won't go. No. It's, uh... I'm, I'm all right. Yeah. It's just crazy thinking about that. And then, yeah, the I went a lot as a kid. <laughs> I'm fucking scared now. Now you scare me. That was my dream for years. I always thought I could find refuge. Well, you know, if you want to go to, like, <laughs> in the middle of if you want to go to, uh, what is it, Cancun, you're okay. But they sell Coke on the beach now. It's one of those places where you go, they're selling Coke on the beach now, bro. But they do that in Puerto Rico. They do? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> did you see that? I know it's funny you said that because the now other that, day. That explains Martin on a jet ski. Yeah. <laughs> I don't love that shit The no other day, more. they oh said they got God. 14 tons of coke going into Puerto Rico. And I said, I wonder who the fuck is snowing all that coke in Puerto Rico. And you just told me there's some people on the beach. So it's tremendous. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to go to the beach. I there's never a, went to Puerto the beach. Rico's beautiful. There's, there's, yeah, oh, Puerto I know. Rico's beautiful. I fucking grew up there. You know what? Puerto Rico has I that I used to go every fucking summer. That every town should have. It's an area where nobody fucks with you. Like, you go down there, and that's where they have the drugs, per se. And so if... You want to get them? You go down there and you go in there at your own fucking risk. That's that's what. But if every it's funny you sound a Puerto Rican the way you said no, that. No, no. But if every if you want to get them, you go down there. <laughs> <and> <laughs> but, but but if every town had that, a place where they just turn away, they don't know that it's happening. They do that. If if, if every town had that, then people would fucking behave. If you knew that you could go down there to unleash, you know, it's like the freaking the Chinese got it all figured out, bro. They're fucking all prim and proper, but then when the lights go down, they have all these fucking whorehouses. <laughs> these guys go over there, they tear it up, they get fucking rubbed wherever they want to get rubbed, and everybody's happy. Where's this at? All over the... Come on, man. You go to fucking Thailand, you go to Singapore. Oh, okay, in those countries. Yeah. I, I, bro, I don't got no passport. I got felons. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a warrant. They don't let me go nowhere. Nowhere. I can't go fucking nowhere. Bro, you go to Singapore in the daytime, you can't chew gum on the street. You can't chew gum on the street. You get busted for chewing gum for on the fucking chewing street. Chewing gum. You got to have your shit together. There's cameras everywhere, right? But there's an area in town where you can go and do whatever the fuck you want. And nobody's going to fuck It's called you. Englewood. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's what it's called. You go down there, you can di die in a car, in a restaurant. No, no one will around. know. <laughs> Nobody will fucking You're know. You're cooking your own know? car. <laughs> now, how long? You're married now. No, 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 no. no I, don't, I don't like the title. She's beautiful. I don't like the title. She's yeah, beautiful. She's together. beautiful. All right. She's beautiful. <laughs> You're lucky. You married? No. You gave that fucking shit up. Right? <laughs> That's it. I remember. We tried it twice, bro. <laughs> Joey, Joey. And, Alex, he he dra and he dragged me to the second one. <laughs> he made he me perform the ceremony. Yeah, they started the night at the I, I had to become a. You gotta get certified. Minister. They started a corporation together. <laughs> they were selling shirts. Also, when the one that called them, dog, it's tough being married. She's done. This Joey, I forgot where the fuck I went. I think when I went to Puerto Rico, <laughs> he called me up. He goes, hey, I heard you found a wife in Puerto Rico. You're not coming back. You don't want to grow old alone. <laughs> He's clowning me on all this shit. Every time he saw me, as soon as I got uh, uh, divorced. Because that's what he told me. I didn't want to die alone. He wasn't just fuck them and kill them. He was going to <laughs> You know what I'm to tell you? I don't know what to tell you. I don't want to die alone. What do you want to do? You know? Nobody wants to die alone, but, you know. What was he telling? Yeah, he was, he was telling. He was going through that that phase, and uh, we we all knew. I told him, "Don't do it, bro. Don't do it." There's some people who could get married and cut the. I couldn't do it at 20. Mm -hmm. I tried it when I was a young man. I failed at it. Now, when you get old, you got nothing to lose. You're like, "Fuck! I don't want to swing <laughs> dick no more. I'm tired. I already had chlamydia. I got a blister under my tongue. I get married now." <laughs> For years, I had a blister under my tongue. I, every night when I ate pussy, I just popped it in the morning. That's it. I didn't know what was in there. Hairs, pussy. Some chick came in my face one time, and I always got that blister. I didn't give a fuck how I got it. I don't give a fuck. I, didn't, I wouldn't go to Dr. Sif with that. I didn't go. I swear to God. You ever have a chick, her pussy explodes in your mouth? It's tremendous. You don't know what's even happening. <laughs> then I would just go over there and tell her, listen, I'm just going to eat your pussy and finger bang it. I want you to come in my mouth. And they would just shoot. Uh, and I just... <laughs> I was like a kid in a water fountain. <laughs> and I loved that. I loved when she came in my face. I loved it. It's tremendous. But then I got that blister on my tongue. I didn't know what it was from, but I ain't going to tell her. Hey, you got, a, it's a, you got a hell of a memory, though, bro. Doug, that was a long time ago. You always remember all your sick. Does it, does it keep coming out? No, not no. anymore. <laughs> no, no, that was 20 years ago I was eating that chick. I don't even know where she is. I tried looking for her on Facebook like a year ago. <laughs> 
<laughs> you ever think of a name when you're driving? <laughs> like you're driving on the 405, you think of a chick that stuck a tongue up your ass, and you're like, that filthy bitch. And then you try for like a week, you can't think of a name. And you're on Facebook putting her first name in, just sitting there. Like, <laughs> that is... I'm going to figure this fuck <laughs> I'm going to figure this puzzle out. <laughs> and then one day when you leave the detective, you fucking think of the name. Oh, my God, it just comes to you. And you go home and you type her in and she's done. Like, she's yeah, just like, done. Oh, like you can tell she's been the through same. the gamut. No, that's it. She's done. She got three kids. They're all different nationalities. <laughs> <laughs> she's got a tattoo on her neck. <laughs> I like love the it. The years I, were rough. Oh my god, it's fucking hysterical. Oh oh it's fucking craziness. <laughs> Martina, are you in this film? Um, you know what? I do a little cameo on the film. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Do we have a lot of behind the scenes in this? Is it really? It, there's a there's a film up front. There's a okay. film uh, about a six minute movie that's that, that plays it before uh, I hit the stage. It kind of tells a story about how my mom and dad met. Okay. And there's certain people that get to play certain characters in that in that sequence. It's a great, yeah. I got. Let's. I'll tell you. Watch. Uh, as far as comics go, I got Martin in it. Alfred Robles is in it. Rick Gutierrez is in it. Armando Cosillo is in it. Uh, Tommy Chong is in it. Um, uh, Ron White is in it. Uh, Gina Brion. Gina Brion. How many comics was that? Shit, that's at least eight. I have more. <laughs> what about Ivan? Yeah, Ivan. <laughs> didn't want to be in the movie. Ivan don't got a cameo. Yeah, Ivan don't his, got a cameo. We don't throw no, him a sad card. He gets insurance. <laughs> <laughs> he get level two insurance now. I already get him insurance. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> he wants a sad card. Some people call it sad card. You know Just to pull it out. Just to pull it out. I got a sad card and shit. It don't get you thick and shit. All right. So after the movie comes out, what's next? Well. uh... I guess it depends how the, how the movie turns out, but I'm already scheduled to do The movie's going to be uh, fucking great, bro. The movie's going to be great. You have fans all over the world. You know, 20 years ago, I'd go see all these comics, and there was maybe two comics that when you left there, you felt really good. It was like you did a drug. You know, one was Pablo Francisco years ago. Mm. You know, years ago, 20 years ago. When you went to see Pablo, you left there and your fucking head was buzzing. He'd be making noises and jumping up and down and <laughs> turning purple. You don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> Doing Tortilla Boy. Doing Tortilla Boy and all that shit. Now, the Seinfeld in Spanish. Mm -hmm. When I first went to the Laugh Factory, I came to showcase for CTV, for the Latino Laugh Festival in 1996. Mm -hmm. And I saw Pablo up there doing the cast of Seinfeld in Spanish. And I almost ran out of there. Like, I'm like, I'm coming down here with pussy jokes. <laughs> you fucking crazy. This is talent, you know. But uh, that's what you've become. When people go see you, bro, Fluff, they leave there, and it's like they know you, like they hug you. You're the guy they want to feed. You're the guy they want to, you know. It's amazing what you've done. Uh, and, yes, you've reached the highest, the highest, the highest for Latino comics. It's a fucking... It's you know, Joey. You know feel. what's you know what's crazy is that leaving the show, I, I, I'm out there when the people are leaving. It's like they're leaving Disneyland. Yeah, I'm they really you, feel I like they it. went. Th they, it's not. I mean, you, th you think you go a to a comedy show? Man, you, you it's it's you think you just left Disneyland, and it's you know, and, and it's funny because it's like you know, you mentioned Latino comic, but holy shit! I mean, as far as a comic period, just it's it's huge. It's fucking big. It's a uh, big props, bro. Thank you. Like I said, when I, when I see different kids, you know, I got to go to all these kid things now. And my wife will say, hey, you know, he's a stand-up. Well, my wife will tell the lady, and then they go, he's a stand-up comic. And right away, the first person to ask me to, you know, fucking fluffy. Yeah. And I'll sit, and then they start, you know, jumping and whatever. <laughs> and I'm like thinking of myself imitating Richard Pryor when I was 10. Like, I was imitating You were watching dirty Richard comic. Pryor at 10? Dog, I went to a kid's house that was Puerto Rican. We used to play basketball. And he had a brother who was a junkie. And we had, like, the Beatles on. You know, like, when you listen to the Beatles, we could tell, like, this is jamming. And this motherfucker was sleeping, drooling with heroin. And he's like, what the fuck you little motherfuckers listening to? And we're like, the Beatles. We thought we were cool. And he goes, took that shit off. And he put on Richard Pryor, the nigga's crazy. When, he, when Richard Pryor meets Dracula. Mm -hmm. And my head almost blew up, bro. It almost blew up as an American, as a Cuban, as a young boy. You know, hey man, what's that? What's that dirt on the back of your neck? You a filthy little motherfucker too. All that shit, 
almost made my head blow up at that age. I know it backwards and forwards. This time in the mornings, I'm getting dressed, and I'll put that on YouTube, and I'll break into tears. Wow. Because that's my childhood. That's what you're going to do for these kids, bro. 20 years from now, they're going to listen to this and go, wow, this is the guy I listened to. Or this is the guy that inspired me to do comedy. You know, uh, my hats go off to you, bro. Plus, I got to tell you a story real quick. Do you know how me and Lee met? Mm. Do you have any fucking idea? No. You think I just met Lee? Uh, what yeah. I, but this is the nicest. I didn't fucking, even know you knew him. This is the <laughs> nicest. I thought he was just the guy that worked the This buttons. is one of the nicest fucking people you ever meet. One of the nicest Jewish fucking people you ever meet. He's the real deal. He eats bagels. He don't give a fuck. <laughs> That's my brother right there. That's my little fucking Cuban Jew brother. So I got nothing going on in my life. I go over to this fucking car dealership. Right down the corner where you guys both passed. The mm -hmm. Ford, not the Nissan across the street. The Ford. The Ford. I go in there and I tell them I want to sell cars. And they say to me, what, what are you talking about? I go, I want to sell cars. One guy comes over and goes, Doug, why ain't you in the longest yard? I go, yeah. He goes, what are you doing here? I go, I want to sell cars. I want to apply for a job. I had a plan. I moved to the valley. I didn't want to go back on the road no more. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to go on the road no more. I just wanted to do movies and I was going to do comedy locally. And I was just going to live in the valley and kill this motherfucker out. I wasn't doing coke no more. I hadn't been doing coke about three years. I was just smoking pot. I was I had just lost the weight. I would walk around every morning and that's what made me go into the fucking Ford dealer. And they said, you know what, we'll give you a job, you gotta pass the drug test. Boom, I got a call one day that you're doing stand up revolution. They tell me that I failed the piss test, which I knew going in. And I don't know nobody who who's clean. So it's like you know, in the old days you could have somebody piss for you and whatever. I do Stand Up Revolution, you're very nice to us, you give us a bag, you give us a fucking camera, a bloggy. I don't know what I'm going to do with this fucking bloggy. I thought that if you pressed it, it went right to YouTube. No, now i got to <laughs> download this shit. I don't know. And this poor kid hits me up on Facebook and he says, I'm an editor and I'm looking for shit to do. So I said, listen, how about I get a camera and I'll tape the bloggy during the week and I'll see you Mondays and I'll give you $100 a week and you edit it for me. And we put the tapes up on YouTube, and that became Laugh Flavor's World. And from there, we shot a documentary, which we were going to shoot with the fucking bloggy. And to this day, we still have the bloggy we just shot in fucking August. So all this is because of you, in a way, because wow. I wanted to do something with that camera. People had given me cameras before, and I kept saying, I'm going to do YouTube videos. I'm going to do this. I wouldn't do nothing with them. I wouldn't fucking do nothing with them. And finally, I go, this kid gave me the best luck in the world. This kid's on fire. It didn't take a fucking genius to know you were on fire. I wanted to do something with this energy. I met him, and this is how this whole thing started. He talked me into the podcast. We did a documentary. You saw the documentary well, yeah. with my mother. That was him. That was this fucking lunatic. We, we, we took a plane to New York. I got him for chance. He bumped into people that I stabbed. It was fucking <laughs> tremendous. Giving me was, banana bread the I entire gave banana shoot. bread the entire shoot. I had them all fucked up. So this is the energy that you spread. I don't know if you knew this story. Oh, no, I had so no from idea. that fucking bloggy, which we still have, it's wow. got dents in it, bumps. <laughs> I will never give that up. They're gonna bury me. That's gonna be in my suit pocket on the right. I still got that fucking bloggy. Wow. And that was your energy. This whole podcast, because from there I did. The, I was still doing the podcast with Felicia, but this whole thing. He's the one that said you got to do a morning podcast. Blah 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 blah. And this is how this started, brother. So that's amazing. I'm happy, bro, that you called That's me today. Amazing. I know you got other shit to do. I'm very happy you just dropped in and said hello and spread uh, and brought my other brother with you, <laughs> this fucking savage. And I'm proud of him, you know. I got a call a couple of weeks ago. An agent's going to sign him and shit. He's a fucking animal. You know? he's, got, he's got shit going on. He's got a hair deal. He's got a hair deal. No, no, no. Every time I see him, he's got a new hair deal. I thought it was, uh, he's Mexican. Now, what is it? Iron Maiden. Eddie Snyder. Run to the fucking hills. Remember? <laughs> Run. Is that him? Run to the hill? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's, the, that's the first. Uh, that's the first album without Paul Diano. Yeah. Who the fuck you think you're dealing with? You see what <laughs> Paul Diano looks like now? No. He's bigger than me. Bald. Are you He's serious? He's still fucking old rat child on acoustic. Hit it on YouTube. It's fucking hard. Fucking Paul Diano. Who the dude, fuck you I, think you're you dealing with? Bruce Dickinson was a fucking genius when he saw Iron Maiden. He said these motherfuckers can go to the top, but that's not the guy to take them to the top. That's he amazing. Goes, I can take them to the top. He punked himself into the band. And took wow. the yeah no him, Bruce Dickinson was a bad motherfucker because everybody says uh, Iron Maiden with Paul Diano was great it was great but Bruce Dickinson just made it fucking arena great 
You know, he was just bigger than that. And he's still, if you ever see Bruce Dickinson perform, that motherfucker will run up and down the stage. He's in his 50s. He's jumping on speakers. I mean, you got to be in fucking shape to jump on speakers. Wow. This motherfucker's still putting on a fucking show. Fucking yeah. Gabriel jumps on speakers. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, kid. Fuck Bruce Dickinson. <laughs> July 10th, you'll see him jump on speakers. July 11th. July 11th, he's doing fucking Circus de Soleil. He's a fucking savage. He's like fucking Pacquiao. You know when Pacquiao, you know when Pacquiao goes to box afterward, he fucking goes and does karaoke. Gabriel does Vegas, he goes and does fucking Circus de Soleil. Nobody knows. They put a mask on him and shit. Listen, man, I love you for doing this. I wish you... All the luck, you're my little young brother. You know, you wanted to reveal a secret to these people about us? Uh, about how far back we go? No, with the oh. virginity. <laughs> All right, look. <laughs> oh, shit. Tell these I'll, motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> Tell the girlfriend I brought it up. I'm sorry. I love it, it with it, all it's my way before, Yeah. All right, so I guess the year was 1997. I just turned 20, 21. And, uh... uh We're uh, <laughs> we're in Phoenix, Arizona. Tucson. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tucson, Arizona. Sorry. Which let's let these people know. There's tons of dirty bitches in Tucson. <laughs> when you fly into Tucson, they give you a condom with a needle and shit with a syringe. That's where I got the pimple under my tongue. I think it was in Tucson. <laughs> so break it down for me. I'm sorry, didn't do it. All right, all right. Oh, yes, yeah, so it was the. It was the summer of 97. <laughs> We're in Tucson, Arizona, playing at Bugsy's. And, uh, you know, I met someone there, and uh, something happened that night. That was the first time it happened. <laughs> now, as far as how dirty you want me to get it, Joey, I won't do it. I won't do it. Just tell her you banged her. That's it. I don't want you to tell me you stuck a finger up her ass or she stuck a finger in your ass. Uh, you your know, own. the deed happened, man. It That's went down. But here's the thing is that when But you I, didn't say nothing the next morning. Like, you were, you were still in shock. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was in shock for a few reasons. <laughs> uh, so I go to... <laughs> matter. Never mind, dude. That, yeah, the cookie. The cookie. Yeah, the cookies. Do, this is yeah. tremendous. I ain't fucking around with nobody. You make me forget the. You made me forget my own virginity, dude. That's yeah, how good that cookie was. No, I'm telling you, this is the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you should have had a fucking cookie. It would have put you over the top. You, oh and look at them. what are you gonna? This cleanse ain't gonna do nothing to you now. <laughs> that cleanse is gonna melt in your fucking stomach. How's that cookie feeling? It's amazing, bro. Let me give some shout outs. Ooh. Get the fuck out of here. Get ready. He's man. gonna call you in like 45 minutes and, and like talk to you about Black Sabbath and. <laughs> Devils and why your family came from Mexico. <laughs> and what was the outline? You had, did you have an outline for the show? Or no? That's nah, funny. Yeah, just, I just, just try to fucking write things down so I remember. Shane Quinlan, Justin Monk, Mad Buffer, Rob Bebtold, Lady Red, whatever your fucking name is. Lady, <laughs> Lady Ranicorn. You know what I'm talking about. You know oh, what Ranicorn, you. yeah. Yeah, Ranicorn. She <laughs> wanted to sniff your ass. She even said it. <laughs> Whose asshole do I have to sniff to get a shout out? And I said, Lisa, yeah. Lady Ranacorn, <laughs> Tiago Guerra, and Aris Abar. Puerto Rican dude. Bad motherfucker. You're not telling the whole story, though. I had to have like 10 pounds of hummus or something. No, listen. Don't worry about the hummus. 10 pounds of hummus? He, he hates hummus. So I, 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 hate I hummus. bring it up, and he just he goes into a panic attack. That and ranch. And what, what was the thing we found out in the live podcast? So, soy coffee. Soy milk. Soy, soy milk. milk in your coffee. What the fuck? Put regular milk. <laughs> like it's going to change your life. You know what I'm saying? A little yeah. fucking... Just regular. They all want to be different. I want almond so. joy in my milk. Listen, I'm going to fucking stab you. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to shout out to Onnit for all your fucking health needs. If your knee hurts, strong bone. <laughs> if you want more cardio, get some fucking shroom tech. The uh, the one I take for jujitsu it keeps me fucking. Sometimes I leave jujitsu. Yeah. Sometimes I leave jujitsu, bro. My heart's fucking pumping. I gotta go home and calm down. That's how good the shroom tech sport is. If you're looking for some more fucking cardio, I mean, I stopped smoking dope, so I got more air in there. You know what I'm saying? But the fucking car, the shroom tech sport really takes it to a different level. I'm fucking stoned <laughs> to the gills. You know? Go to honor.com. See what they got. They got the ropes. They got the kettlebells. They got the fucking Alpha brand. Go over there, pressing. Church. In the box. C H U R C H. I hope that's how you spell it. Knock yourself out. Also, Nature Box, the healthiest fucking snacks sent to your fucking house. No drama. You understand me? The fucking mailman knocks. Boom. 
There you get your bar. You're not asking questions, nothing. You can order the pistachios. You can order the sesame sticks. You can knock yourself the fuck out. My favorite, the cocoa almonds. Tell them, Lee, they're bad motherfuckers. I never get this one. Shut up, cocksucker. I knocked on your door, but you, you weren't home. He never brought them back. It. He brought them back. You bring me the weird ones. You bring me the pumpkin seeds. And yeah, the- you like that shit. You like hummus. God, keep eating that shit. They're going to fucking take you over there and butt fuck you in the muffler. And then you're going to be eating hummus with chips. You know who the Taliban. I'm scared, I'm scared of you. You're going to Keep fucking around with those people. <laughs> Nature's Box. Go to the box. Press on what? Joey. Joey. J-O-E-Y. Nature's Box. Get 50% off your first fucking order. This is nutritionist approved snacks. I ain't fucking with you. They're fucking tremendous when you're stoned. I ain't going to lie to you. Nature's Box. Naturebox.com. Tremendous. Naturebox.com. The, the fucking Naturebox.com. The fucking <laughs> pistachio. <laughs> spicy pistachios. But the, the almonds and cocoa. Fucking tremendous. And everything's natural, dog. I ain't fucking around with you. Nailed it life. If you want to smoke wax, nailed it life. If you want to smoke the fucking vapor, nailed it life. If you want to smoke crack, go fuck your mother. Nailed it life. Tremendous. Go to nailedillife.com. Tell them Uncle Joey sent you. Get 20% off your fucking first vapor pen. And that's how we do it, dog. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got time for fucking fun and games. <laughs> this week, Salt Lake City. Next week, Governor's Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's it. You want to plug anything, my brother? Ah, shoot. Yes, I'll be in San Diego. What date? Uh, the 26th of, of June. What club? American. There you go, American Comedy Club. Nice fucking place. They got pork chops. Go down there. <laughs> Tell them Martin Moran and Uncle Joey sent you. You, uh, they know. <laughs> <laughs> they know. Let's go to Live Nation. It's him and Willie Nelson <laughs> battling it out all fucking summer. You take July off still? No, man. Not this year. I, I, that not that, this that year. game is no, done. Not yet. this year. Actually, the next, for the next month, it's, uh, it's just, you know, talking about the movie. So you're not traveling the next month? Not no, I'm traveling the entire month, month, going all over the country, you know, doing my runs to, right. to let people know about the movie. So, I mean, it's it, it's time off, but it's not time off. You know, it's time off from performing, but it's not time off from the traveling and the staying in the different cities and, the you know, just getting up early and getting out there and uh, letting people know what's going on. I love you with all my heart, and you know that. If not, you wouldn't be here sitting out. You know how much I love you. You have all the respect in the world. I, I would wish you all the luck in the world. You know this movie's going to be tremendous. I, I, I assume I'm going to the premiere. I'll get you to the, to the Fuck police. Fuck I wear a suit like a motherfucker. <laughs> Shiny shoes. I sit next to my wife like a doctor. You know I'll watch him all night. He can't eat no fucking cleanse. You know what I'm I love you. Thank you very much for listening Thank to the church. Joey. See you Monday. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Joe, for bringing them up. Fl- Flying Jew. I love you, so, cocksucker. How, how bad was the cookie? Did I lie to you? Yes. You're high, but you can, you're manageable. Well, yeah, because I ate like 75 milligrams. That's right. You got a beautiful shirt on. <laughs> Look Thank at you. It. You can see how Jewish he ate. He ate 75 milligrams, not 73. <laughs> how many? 70. I don't know. I ate three quarters of a half. I love you, cocksucker. Love you did a good job this week. You're a savage, you bad motherfucker. Look at you. Wigglefoot. Oh. Put, put missing persons on Wigglefoot. Little me. Are you going to give him a shout out? Huh? You're going to talk to these people about these I was products? going to. But Go ahead. Give them a little shout out. Go ahead. Right. You bad motherfucker. You look at you. Solid. <sighs> you almost lost on the way to San Diego, by the way. I don't give a fuck. Don't worry about San Diego. It's you. Now you want to talk about San Diego a week later? What are you going to bring up? The Malaysian plane now? Just read the fucking thing. <laughs> now that the show is over, remember Where's to go to naturebox.com and order great tasting healthy <laughs> snacks at 50% off. <laughs> snacks smarter in the new year. I just go to 